Hi, my name's Emily. My friends call me Em, at least they would if I had any friends. <laughs> this is my first YouTube video, which is both exciting and daunting. Hopefully future Em has put in a few timestamps so you can skip ahead to the tutorial bit if you like. But I'm hoping you'll watch the mini tutorials yet to come, so maybe stick around for the next few minutes so we can get to know each other a little bit. Just gonna put a blanket there because on inspection my ass was out. <laughs> not for the first time. Sustainable fashion is a massive passion of mine and very important to me and I came to upcycling through that. I actually started doing it as a way to stop clothes I couldn't donate from going to landfill and then as I shared my thrift flips on social media people were asking for tutorials and here we are two years later I am finally getting around to making a long detailed one YouTube. My plan for this channel is to do all things sustainable fashion, bits of upcycling, how to find your own style, capsule closets, all of that, with a bit of travel and commentary thrown in. One of the video ideas I've literally just thought up this second, but I'm hoping you'll like, is to have a little look at Elvis's fashion with the Elvis film on its way. As you can see from the pussy bow collar blouse, very much into my retro fashion. I wanna try and make my content as accessible as possible, so that's why I will be leaving captions on. And I want to throw up the occasional definition box. This is not to patronise you. This is because I'm constantly trying to find ways to improve my vocabulary. And sometimes I'll be watching other people's channels and I'll think, hmm, what does that word mean? And then I'll have to Google it. Or sometimes I just won't bother and I'll never know. So basically it's a feature that I wish other people had on their channels. So it's one I'm going to put on mine. And it will look like this. I'm saying this in the hopes that I will later learn how to put pop-up boxes when I'm editing because I've not done any editing yet, but you'll see. Crossing my fingers. Before we dive into the actual video, we need to take a moment to have a little look at my outfit. Sustainable fashion requires that you appreciate your clothing, so that's what we're gonna do. First up, we have these boots from Depop. Next up, we have an Ellen Tracy pinafore that I got from a vintage wholesaler. And the star of the show, the pussy bow collar blouse also from a vintage wholesaler. I would like to thank my vintage business for failing and therefore leaving me with no other choice but to accept loads of nice vintage clothes into my wardrobe. Ah, it's funny how things work out. Oh, and last but not least, the little white headband which you will learn to make later on in this video. I've actually made a worksheet to help you through this tutorial. It's available on my Patreon that I have just started. Please consider supporting me on there because as I said, you get the worksheet and all the tutorials before they even get uploaded and it just helps me to be able to keep these tutorials free whilst providing me with a little bit of financial support. Now without further ado, I present the tutorial. This is a sewing tutorial involving a sewing machine but if you don't have one or you don't know how, it should be possible to do with some fabric glue. I haven't personally tried it myself though so I offer no guarantees about the success of that. I am planning on doing some sewing tutorials for complete beginners further down the line, but if you're eager to start learning, there are a myriad of free resources here on YouTube and on the internet in general. Here is what you will need. Elastic, safety pin, matching thread, scissors, ruler, measuring tape, fabric pen, or you can use a normal pencil, but this won't wash out. A hook and eye, a hand sewing needle, an iron, this is an essential part of sewing. It doesn't just make things neater, but it also makes things a lot easier. Pins and a sewing machine or fabric glue. And if you're going the no-sew route, you also need some fraying glue. Things to note before we begin. You need to finish your edges. Shirts are made from woven fabrics and all you need to know about that is anywhere you cut is gonna fray. If you don't do something to stop this, then the material will unravel over time with wear and washing, and then all your hard work will go to waste. So to stop this, we're going to sew a zigzag stitch up the sides so it looks something like this. If you're going no sew, then put the anti-fraying glue on the edges. We have to make the skirt first, and then we have to make the top out of the excess fabric. So I'll give you all the instructions for the skirt first, and then we'll do the top. Instructions for making the skirt. Measure how long you want the skirt to be, then add one centimeter to your length measurement. This is so we can fold over the top one centimeter of the skirt so it looks nice and neat. Then measure that out from the bottom of the shirt and then cut off the bottom of the shirt so you're left with this. Fold over the top one centimeter of the skirt, iron it flat, then fold under the corner on each side so it doesn't hang over. Then sew that all along so the top of the skirt is nice and neat. If you're using fabric glue, then just stick that down. Now you're going to measure your waist. Now measure the width of the shirt and double it. We're now going to take away your waist measurement from the shirt's waist measurement, which gives the amount that needs taking in. So the shirt's waist measurement is like this, and your waist measurement is like this. So you have all this excess. And we're going to distribute that difference around the skirt using these things called darts, which is basically just a sewing term for a fold. They're made by pinching the fabric and sewing up the side. So on the inside, it'll look like this, and on the outside it'll look like this. We're going to spread the difference out over six darts. Two at the back and four at the front. We work out the width of each dart by dividing the amount that needs taking in 
by the number of darts, meaning the size of each of my darts is 9.5 centimeters. Now turn the shirt inside out, starting with the back. Mark the middle of the shirt and then the middle of that on each side. So basically the quarter points. You're going to use the quarter point markings as the center of your darts. So measure the width of your dart and then the length, which I did is six centimeters. Then connect the lines and this little box is your dart. These lines will meet in the middle and you'll sew along them. Now put a pin through the corners, making sure they're aligned on both sides. I put a pin along the top here to keep everything in line because you want to try and get this as perfect as possible, especially at the top. And then pin along the line so it's ready to sew. Once you've sewn the two back darts, we'll do the four at the front. Now onto the front. Mark three centimeters in from the shirt button strip. It doesn't matter how much you leave here, just as long as it's the same on both sides. Then the width of your first dart. Then leave a gap. I went with four centimeters. Again, it doesn't matter as long as it's the same on both sides and you have enough space for all your darts. Then the width of your second dart. Then draw out your darts like we did on the back and repeat on the other side. Repeat the pinning and sewing processes that you did with the back darts. Now fold all the darts to the side and pin them in place. Then sew them along the same line you hemmed the top of the skirt with so it's nice and neat. If you're using fabric glue, then just stick these to the side. Now iron in the pleats, which I didn't do the first time I made the skirt, but it makes it look a lot better. You also might want to sew some hook and eyes between the top two buttons to stop it bulging. Now that's all done, we can move on to the top. Instructions for making the top. As I said earlier, the top is made from the excess fabric that's left over once you've chopped off the skirt length. We'll take all the measurements first, and then I'll explain what to do with them all. The scrunch effect is made by creating a little channel at the top and the bottom of the top, and then putting a piece of elastic through that is shorter than the length of the fabric. The excess fabric then scrunches up. Measure across your chest how much you want the top to cover horizontally. Make sure you take into account side boob security. I'll be referring to this as the horizontal boob measurement. Yes, that is the correct scientific term. Then measure how long you want it to be, going around the boobs. We're going to add three centimeters to this measurement. If you measured 20 centimeters, for example, then it will go to 23 centimeters, which is just 1.5 centimeters added on each end because we're going to fold over that 1.5 centimeters to create the channel that we are going to put the elastic through. If you're using fabric glue, you might wanna add on more because I imagine glue placement isn't always that precise and you wanna ensure that there's enough space for the elastic to go through. Then how long you want the straps to be? Now with the horizontal boob measurement. First, cut two pieces of elastic to your horizontal chest measurement length. We're going to use this to work out how much fabric we need. Double the horizontal boob measurement. The reason for this is because we need that excess fabric that I talked about before to create that roughly scrunchy effect. Yes, another scientific term. We're all learning today. Once we've doubled it, we're then going to add on an extra two centimeters. This gives us one centimeter each side that we can fold over and sew down to make it look nice and neat. You'll probably need to sew bits of fabric together like I did to get the length. To do this, put the sections on top of each other with the nice side of the fabric facing each other. The nice side being the side that you want people to see. Then sew them together with a one centimeter seam allowance. So sew it one centimeter from the edge. You'll be losing fabric length to the seam allowance, so make sure you factor that in. So if you have two pieces of five centimeter long fabric and then you sew them together, then your final fabric length will only measure eight centimeters. So for every section that you add, add two centimeters to your length. Once you've sewn all your pieces together, it'll look something like this. Now iron and sew those seams open close to the edge of the fabric. This will make getting the elastic through easier. This is your reminder to zigzag all your edges so they don't fray. Now we're going to make that channel that we're going to pull the elastic through. So fold and iron over 1.5 centimeters each side. Sew that down, leaving a one centimeter channel for the elastic to go through. If you're using fabric glue, you might wanna leave a little bit more space because I imagine glue placement isn't always that precise and you wanna make sure there's definitely enough space for the elastic to go through. Put a safety pin through one end of the elastic and then start to feed that through the channel until the other end has just entered the channel. Then sew the elastic in place. Then continue to thread it through until you get to the other end and sew those down too. Now fold over one centimeter at each end and sew that down. Now we'll make the straps. Add two centimeters to your strap length. This gives us about one centimeter each side to sew the straps in. Then using your new length measurement, cut out two strips of three centimeter width. Again, if you're using fabric glue, maybe make these a little bit wider because we need to be able to pass a safety pin through the middle. Zigzag the ends either side, fold them in half, nice side facing in and iron them. Then sew them half a centimeter from the edge and zigzag the edge. Attach a safety pin to the end, then put it inside. Pull it along until it's turned inside out. Once you've made both, attach them to the top. One end you'll attach to the end of the top continuing sideways 
ways and then the other end so about five centimeters in positioned vertically now we're going to make the ties at the bottom of the top it's better to have these longer than shorter more is more we're just going to repeat the method we used to make the straps so three centimeter width strips iron and fold in half then sew it up then zigzag use a safety pin to turn inside out tuck in the ends and sew up attach them to the top and it's complete and then we reach the question that every sustainable sewing star must ask themselves what should i do with my excess fabric and i'll tell you i hobbled together bits of excess fabric to create this little tie and on first glance i know what you're thinking and it's literally just a strip of fabric i'm incredibly underwhelmed but this little strip of fabric is actually incredibly versatile and can be used as a necktie a hair tie, a headband. Tie it onto your bag to add a pop of colour. Use this as a bow for your dog if you like. The possibilities are endless. What do you think you're modelling? Oh, you're a good model. It's basically made exactly the same way as the straps, but just with more fabric. So cut out your bits of fabric. You want around an eight centimetre wide strip that you fold in half with a one centimetre seam allowance. So in the end, your tie will be about three centimetres wide and around 140 centimetres long. Cut the ends to a point, then zigzag. Iron in half with the nice side facing in. Sew with a one centimetre seam allowance, then turn it inside out using a safety pin. Tuck in the ends, fold and sew. And it should end up about three centimetres wide and roughly about 140 centimetres long. I tried to make this as detailed as possible, so hopefully it was clear what was going on. If you found this useful, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe because the better this does, the more I'll be able to create for you. As this is my first video, I'd love any feedback. So if you have any constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments. I said constructive, don't bully me. I will cry. You'll have your opportunity to chase me off YouTube. We're not there yet. As I've mentioned before, I made a worksheet that breaks down every stage and kind of acts like a checklist so you don't have to worry about missing any steps, which I've done before, which is why I know that the worksheet is necessary. This will be available on my Patreon that I've made to help support me. I love seeing when you guys make things from my tutorials, so if you do make this, and you post it on social media, please tag me so I can see it. Or just DM it me on Insta. You can find me at emily.j.muir on TikTok and Instagram. I don't have Twitter because cyberbullying is not my forte. The next video I'll be uploading, if everything goes to plan that is, is a video on how to find your personal style. And if I do say so myself, it is the most in-depth and quite frankly best version of that I've ever seen because it goes beyond create a mood board and buy a fuck ton of clothes. So I'd love to see you there. And thank you for watching.